It's tax day in America, if you're not familiar. See, we're quite insane because our government hates us. If you're in most every other nation, when tax time comes around, you get a little card in the mail and says, this is how much you owe. Because we have all your records. Because this is so we've already got done it. <clears throat> this is how much you owe. If you don't agree, you can contest it. But uh, this is how much we're saying you owe. And the end. Oh, no, 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 no. Not here. Not here. No, we're, we're Americans. We have rugged individualism. Over here. You're, the people who you've paid taxes to, they still send all that documentation to the government. The government still has all that information. Mm -hmm. They already know how much you owe, right? The IRS knows exactly. But they're not going to tell you. They're not going to tell you. You have to fill out a bunch of paperwork and send them what you think you owe. It's like the price is right. You have to be, you know, you have to make a guess without going over. And only the prize is not going to prison. Right. And you have to send them that paper. You have to pay someone else to look at it and go, yep, looks right. And send that to them. And if it matches, everything's fine. And typically what happens just to make it even crazier is they don't even check. You send them the stuff. They look at it. It's like, this is how much you're doing. All right, fine. All right, cool. Until something gives them a reason to look at you and go, hey, I just saw you there. Let's look at your stuff, huh? Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... Crazy. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm I didn't think we were going to have an eclipse story this week. So because in my mind, the only eclipse story you can have is somebody looked at it and now they're blind. And that's not normally our, you know, our way of handling it. I mean, there's also the people that go insane. Well, yeah, but that's still, you know. But no, 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 someone managed to find a way to include an eclipse thing. This is, comes to us from, uh, from Mexico. I, I just, I, yep. <laughs> Mexican news channel accidentally airs man's testicles instead of solar eclipse. Oh, I, that's an easy mistake to make. That happens all the time. I, I, I'm sure people... Were they at least eclipsing <laughs> his anus? Was the sun literally shining out of his ass? <laughs> uh, Mexican media outlet made an awkward broadcasting error when covering the solar eclipse on Monday. Uh, RCG Media's 24-7 news program has been using clips submitted by viewers. There's your problem. Uh, during their coverage of the, <laughs> during their coverage of the rare, rare celestial event. However, the show's host realized they had been pranked by the viewer who had sent a shocking video to the news program. When the presenter was discussing the cities, which had sightings of the eclipse, image of the event were broadcast to viewers. The show presented an image of the phenomena in which the moon could be witnessing totally covering the sun. Do you really have to explain what an eclipse is? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, actually, yeah, you do. The segment was quickly cut when the host realized they had instead shown a video of a man blocking the sun with his testicles. <laughs> so there's video. Yeah, and we can't really do that here. We can't show it to you. Yeah. 
but in I mean, points for effort because <laughs> I'm watching the video and the dude actually did like lay in a position and run his balls across the sun. <laughs> So I mean, <laughs> at least you put in the work. <laughs> Kept it relevant. <laughs> you know, riffing. He's just riffing. Jesus Christ. The cat rescue I work for did a video where one person oh. held up an orange cat and another person eclipsed the orange cat with a black cat. That, and that's adorable. But neither of those had balls. It's not adorable. You, you don't just, you don't just. <sighs> the fuck? You See, gotta this... screen those. This is, yeah, you like, got. Like, do you have nobody checking these yeah. before you just put them on the air? You do never, never in the internet era. I do not understand yet how you do not trust user submissions for any per reason Bodie McBoatface yep. we can, you cannot trust the public nope. ever uh -uh. you cannot trust the public because you know hey send us your photos of the eclipse and well it's kind of an eclipse legally just it wasn't the moon the moon was a little in a different position actually um <sighs> so yeah that that's <laughs> that was not what i was expecting and yet there we go okay next up we're going to new york and speaking of boats i don't know how you did this you're psychic or some shit uh, -oh. uh what the entire fuck Man arrested for allegedly taking decommissioned New York City fireboat on an overnight cruise. Man was arrested Thursday after allegedly taking a decommissioned New York City fireboat for an overnight cruise on the Hudson River before becoming stuck, jumping ship, and stealing another vessel. <laughs> Charged with two counts of grand larceny. Man commandeered the fireboat, known as the John J. Harvey, by untying it from its mooring. Uh, the 130-foot-long vessel now serves as a museum or in local acclaimed after it was used to evacuate survivors of 9-11. Once aboard the boat, the man was able to drift a short distance into the Hudson River, but quickly got stuck. He leapt overboard. Wait, he jumped into the Hudson River? Yep, leapt overboard, plunging into the frigid waters, and later emerging on a second stolen vehicle or vessel. He navigated the sailboat toward Pier 51. Department's Harbor Unit responded about a stolen boat. So, first of all... You don't need to send him to prison. He's the Toxic Avenger now. Yeah, because hut, the, the hut... Ooh, jeez. Oh, ah, oh, jeez. Oh, ooh, God. Um, so, not only did you steal, like, you know, a museum... You stole a museum! You stole a fucking museum. How do you do that? Like, if you steal one thing from a museum, they're kind of pissed. If you steal the whole museum, you've upped the ante a bit. Yeah. People are asking what it's a museum of. Um, of itself, probably. Yeah. The USS Intrepid is also docked in New York City, and that is an aircraft carrier. That is a museum. We have the Yorktown. Same so difference. You just... Right, go and see like what an aircraft carrier is like. So it's probably a museum of itself with information about 9/11 since it was in 9/11. But you you've already failed to pilot the boat once. You've decided you want to do over and you steal somebody else's. How do they let you out of the house unescorted at this point? Wouldn't you think these sort of bad decisions would have popped up throughout their life before now? You don't just one day decide you're going to steal a boat out of no. No, no. There are hints and clues that lead up to this behavior throughout your entire life. I got 20 bucks says he's running for mayor next election. 
and he might do a better job actually that's the terrifying part like New York City has a long and storied history of everybody hating the fucking mayor. I don't know how anybody gets elected because no matter who the mayor is, everybody hates him. Maybe they should just, you know, stop electing shitheads. That would help. Like, just, just stop electing shit. Oh, well, here's another. This is a complete fucking shithead. Um, I have, we've never seen this before. I don't know how. I'm trying to think for of an analogy for this, and I'm having trouble because I don't know how you could do this. I, you know what? I've got, I've, I've got nothing. This, this is, this is, this is that bad. I've got nothing. Wait for it. It's a little bit of a slow burn, everybody. Man, I just realized we should have made a Nicolas Cage national treasure joke about that <laughs> boat story. Cambridge cop placed on leave after accidental gun discharge in school. That's concerning. Wait for it. Cambridge Police Department youth resource officer whose gun accidentally went off at Cambridge uh, Rindage and Latin School. Placed on administrative leave pending a full review of the incident. Inside a single staff bathroom, Officer Frank, Frank Greenridge removed his department issue firearm from its holster Place the firearm on a bathroom stall hook by the trigger guard. Just soak that one in. You're in the bathroom stall. There's a coat hook there and you decide, hey, there's this little empty part on the gun. I'll just put it right there. And... The safety was not on. Bang! <laughs> no one was hurt like, by the infinite. I don't know where a great place to put a gun is while you do your business. No, yeah. Because you certainly don't want to lay it on the floor. <laughs> Maybe you take off the whole holster and hang that up? Yeah. Oh, but Tara, that takes work. It's just easier because there's a little hangy thing there, Tara. What else would it be there for if not for a gun, right? What, what else could that possibly be used for? Literally anything else. <laughs> Back in my day, you know what we used that hook for? You'd give you a wedgie and hang your ass from that shit. I've always used it for a purse. <laughs> maybe, maybe a jacket. <sighs> just hang with a How, fuck. Do they just not bother with firearm training with with cops anymore? No, no, that's too expensive. It takes away from the tanks. Yeah, like. Like, I know we've cut a lot of the training. Like, yeah. a don't be a racist piece of shit training. We yeah, can't afford that. But Too woke, so yeah. <laughs> the basic, this is how the gun works, dipshit. Did, like, didn't even turn on the safety. Which yeah. is the terrible part of it, because it's an incredibly stupid idea. All it would have taken is if he just flipped the safety on, this would not have happened. Also, are you just walking around without the safety on? Right? In a school? In a school. Yep. Yep. <sighs> well, another back to New York for this one. This this guy, I actually halfway were like, you are a fucking genius. No, wait, you're a complete imbecile. This story takes us for a ride, so buckle up, everybody. We got we we're, we got a, got a stuff going on here. This is call this one a rise and fall, shall we? Um, a man paid two hundred dollars and fifty seven cents for one night at a famous New York City hotel, then lived there rent free for three years. Now we could go to jail. Now what happened is. Due to some of the laws in uh, New York, he managed to figure out a loophole. 
that had to do with people paying rent and being forced out of their buildings. He booked a stay. According to local housing law, he could not be evicted because of the way he played this out. Um, exploiting a little-known housing law and then attempting to charge another tenant in the building. That was the problem what came up with. Um, let's see. His uh, residency, uh, Barreto's re residency dates back to 2018 when he learned about the New York City's Rent Stabilization Code. The law grants tenants who live in individual rooms within buildings prior to buildings built prior to 1969 the right to request a six-month lease. So he requested the lease from the hotel, and they tried to evict him. He went to court. They didn't show up to contest it in court. So as of right then, he was fucking free and clear. He, they couldn't fucking touch him because they didn't show up to court like they were supposed. This man had navigated the law perfectly. Then he fucked himself. That July. Uh, Wait a minute. Yeah. I didn't know this about the owner of the hotel. Oh, yeah. There's the 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 uh, Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity. Yeah, I know. It's wild, isn't it? Um, here's where he went too far. Here's where hubris claimed him. Last year, Barreto filed papers with the city claiming to be the building's owner. Now imagine you have got free rent effectively for life or for at least for years to come. You won. You won. You beat this. You fucking won. That room is yours now because they fucked up. You win. But no, you had to just push your goddamn luck. And now you're going to jail. You dipshit. You were at the top of everything. And you pissed it away. It's like it's just like playing blackjack and you've got a 20 and you say, hit me. You were living in Manhattan. Yeah, rent fucking free. And, and, and the New Yorker Hotel. The fucking just the New Yorker Hotel. And you're living there for how many years? Five years? Rent free. And you, and you, I never intended to commit any fraud. I don't believe I ever committed any fraud, Barreto told the Associated Press. <laughs> well, you don't own the building, and you said you did. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever looked up the word fraud. <laughs> This had, yeah, you know, the people from Channel Point Corps were out pointing out he didn't just get free rent. He had free water, free electricity, uh, free everything. Yes. Free, like, you had a fucking gym there. I mean, continental breakfast they every cut day. Him off of, hopefully, they cut him off of housekeeping at least. Well, that would just be horrifying if they did that after five years. Come on. That, that would just, I mean, be, I wouldn't keep cleaning the guy's room. No. All right, this next one, this is the craziest shit I have ever seen in my fucking life. And I, that's saying a bit. And it's probably not the craziest, but it's pretty fucking crazy. This is from San Francisco. Um, and we've got video, and I'm going to play it. Let me give Tara the... This is fucking insane. Let's get the video up here. Uh, let's see. So this is from... Uh, San Francisco. And this was live in the middle of fucking traffic. California couple is detailing terrifying turn of events when a tow truck tried to tow them while driving through downtown San Francisco. Their stoplight minding our business. Um, when the couple stopped, they thought the uh, yellow specialty towing tow truck was moving toward a nearby Waymo auton autonomous vehicle. But soon it was too close for comfort. Like, tried to jack up their car onto the tow truck 
while they were driving in the middle of fucking traffic. Why? The company, along with two others, were charged by city attorney David Chu in February for fraud and illegally towing parked cars. His office described, described the company as unscrupulous. Especially towing is now prohibited from bidding or receiving city contracts. Um, uh, the, Joanne, her husband, were able to eventually lose the tow truck and drove back home. It chased them. It the guy fucking chased them in a tow truck. What the fuck? Why? I guess they thought that. They, I don't know. I don't know what the plan was here. Even if you manage to get the car, there's people in it. Not only are there people in it, they have keys. It's not locked. It's not. It's not in park or neutral. They can hit the the gas and fuck up both cars. You crazy bastard! Like what the fuck was the plan here? And this is already a company that has you know the freaking the city is involved. Well, they, in I guess they figured they got caught illegally towing parked cars. They'd start illegally towing moving cars, right? And they do this while a guy is filming them the whole time, start to finish, just the whole nonsense. The hell are you gonna? The, the fuck? Like, what was the plan if you got it? I don't understand. Are you going to try to claim that a car with two people in it and the engine running was illegally parked? Give me money, I'll let you go. Like, that's right. Because that's kidnapping. Yeah, that that's this fact. You that like if you tow them to the impound lot and make them pay, you've now kidnapped them for ransom. That's yeah. That that's what is wrong with you? That's much worse than towing cars illegally. The fuck! <laughs> you can't just snatch people. Well, apparently that one's that that appears to be in 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 contention. I guess maybe maybe we're debating the whole snatching people thing. I would like to not debate that. I think it's pretty clear we should not be snatching people. Right. I I heavily endorse not snatching people. Our last one uh, comes from New a lot of New York this week. I don't think we had a single Florida story. Um, this is and this is Long Island, and this is Long Island. How in the Jesus Christ are you not dead? That's this story. Man led police on chase, drove off 100 foot cliff. South Old New York, driver led police on a 45 minute chase on Long Island, drove off a 100 foot cliff into Long Island Sound and survived. One day's car chase started when police in South Old in uh, far eastern Long Island Responded to a domestic violence call, the man drove off and reached speeds of up to 100 miles per hour as he crossed back and forth across eastern Long Island. Driver turned into... Where? Huh? Because it wasn't on the fucking expressway, I can tell you that much. <laughs> what road on Long Island are you able to do 100 miles an hour on? Well, if you're really determined, apparently any road. Um... I guess that that is out east and it's not beach season, so. Uh, never hits the brakes, never slows down. Uh, Police Chief Martin Flatley uh, told the newspaper. Hits an embankment at the end of the street, goes airborne over the bluff, off the beach, and into Long Island Sound. Car landed in three to five feet of water. Which, that's, dry officers dive in, pulled the driver out and arrested him. Father said the man complained of pain, but had no visible injuries. Charges against him were pending. Jesus Christ. Oh, underwhelming. What, what do you mean? I mean, picture, you're trying to have your big Thelma and Louise moment 
and you splash into three feet of water. Well, yeah, I'm amazed splashing into three feet of water from a hundred foot drop. Yeah. And you're not dead. Yeah. I, 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 I just remember we have people who don't understand what feet are. Um, uh, feet to meters. Yeah. How many meters is that? Yeah. So it's it, a lot. It's a lot. It's not a few. Um, that is who a are 30. And Louise? <clears throat> We're broadcasting for children. Tara, absolute children. Um, 30 meters. He dropped a 30 meter drop. If you're not in uh, America. Whew. So. First of all, I'm still on who are Thelma and Louise. Sorry, yeah. I need a minute. Um, first of all, once upon a time, Susan Sarandon was known for more than being the absolute worst. Yes, yeah, true. Yeah. Leftist. Um, I want to know what car this was. Like, this yeah. is an advertisement. I want to know what the fuck they were driving. I want to drive that car. I want to know what the fuck roads on Long Island you can do 100 miles an hour on, because I've never experienced this. But no, it's just, if, 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 if a car can drop 100 feet into three feet of water and you're fine, I want to drive that car. That sounds like yeah. an amazing, because you fought, like he fucking launched too. He did a, but yeah. T Bird from the Crow is jealous as fuck. <laughs> there's some, there's a reference. Good lord. Just how the, how in the entire fuck? Like, you I'm know, I guess it's an older car. Mm -hmm. Some like old ass Oldsmobile. That's well, built no, like a tank. The problem with those is those, you, you sort of bounce around inside like a pinball you bounce off shit and you die yeah but it's a tank yeah but the car the car's fine you are less fine less fine less fine <sighs> did he turn invincible vehicles mode on <laughs> oh he had cheat codes that that's it that's it he had cheat codes that makes sense okay Got to remember to do that next time. Or, you know, what's that Kurt Russell movie? Where as long as he's in his car, he can't die. Death proof. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Car's day is death proof. That's what he did. I just, I, y you know, the cops were like, oh, he did. Wait, what? He's not. Oh, I got to go in there <laughs> after him. Damn it. Shit. Man, I'm going to get my, my, my socks are going to get wet. Yes. God damn it. Can't we just wait for him to die? Just let him out. At least stay, leave him out there for a while. By the way, I love that above this story, the video is about crime rates in New York City. <laughs> South Hold, Long Island, is it easily two, three hours from New York City. NYPD has no fucking jurisdiction. This is a New York station. I can't blame it on them being from fucking Kansas or something. It's just stupid. Uh, it's Suffolk County PD out there. Nothing to do with each other. I I just I'm just Jesus Christ. I bet this guy is like, oh fuck, I got a lawyer now. Damn. Damn it, I was supposed to die. Yeah, man, dang. Didn't turn out like I was expecting. Shit. Oh, man. I can call my mom. Damn. So, yeah, the, the first thing we learned this week is there's some model of car right now <laughs> yeah. that could survive a 100-foot drop into, into three feet. So I, I want that car. I will feel I, I that sounds like a great car. This someone needs to get to, to look into this. I want to know what the fuck he was Some driving. Mad Max shit. Right. Um we've learned that your towing company 
and you're trying to do some blatantly illegal crap live on video with witnesses, like you're this far away from a you don't get out of jail felony. What the fuck? What in the entire fuck are you doing? Like, it, Christ, you, you, you own a company. You have a fleet of trucks or however many trucks, like even three or four trucks. You won. What are you doing? That's the big theme this week. You won. What are you doing? Yeah, that's that's the next thing. We, we've learned that uh, if you have managed to beat the man, take the win. Take the W. Don't go for what's behind door number two. Don't. And the, that, again, we're, we're broadcasting to children. They're like, "What door number what? What? I'll take what's in the box. Don't, worry, don't remake that with Steve Harvey sometime in the yeah, next couple of years. Yeah. Um, we've learned that the little hook inside the bathroom stall, not for guns. Didn't know we had to explain this one, but we do apparently. Not for your guns. Really didn't think that was something you had to tell people. We've learned that. Stealing from a museum is bad. Stealing the museum, way worse. They kind of get way more pissed off about that. And finally, we've learned. Especially if it's like 9-11 shit. New Yorker is very yeah. sensitive about that. And, and finally, we've learned um, never solicit the audience for, for video while you're live on the air. Or else you're going to get tested. This is also a lesson C SPAN still hasn't learned. Still hasn't learned. No. C SPAN still takes live callers on air with no delay. <sighs> and every now and then, like John Oliver just puts together a compilation of why they shouldn't. Like if, if, if they could, they'd put their dick through the phone. 